Now, how do you find the nth term when it's not going up by the same amount each time? Notice there are terms. There's a first, second, third, fourth term. And notice this one's going up by what? Three. But then the next time it goes up by what? Five. The next one's seven. So what do you think the next one's going to go up by? Probably a nine. Notice if it's not going up by the same amount, it makes the work a little bit different. But what are those each going up by? They're each going up by two. So I have a pretty good idea that if I see a problem like this here, where the the number's increasing by two every time, that it's increasing by. Increasing by, increasing by? Yeah. Increasing by, increasing by. Mm, makes me think maybe what? N squared there. So what I'm looking at is this. Hmm. If I square one, I get one. If I square two, I get four. If I square three, I get nine. If I square four, I get 16. So think about it. What's happening to all those numbers to make that happen? Well, think about it. A1 is two. So if I put two in there, and I take one times one, I get one. What would I have to add to one to get to two? One. And in a sense, that's what we have. Our formula is a n squared equals n squared plus one, meaning this. Now I'm thinking of it like this way I might be able to say it. I know one squared is one. What do I have to do to it to get to two? I know two squared is four. What would I have to do to it to get to five? In each of these cases, we're simply what? Adding what? Adding a positive one. That's why the formula is n squared plus one. And the thing about n squareds that you might want to make note of, if it's increasing by increasing by two, the number increasing by keeps increasing by two, it's probably a squared somewhere in your problem that was making it happen.